Taylor Mason, and I'm here today with Representative Angel Cruz. This is an ongoing oral history project on the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus, diversity within the House, and impact on members and staff. So thank you so much for doing this today. So we're going to do background questions. If you could just tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got to the House of Representatives. With all this sexiness. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I never ever expected myself being a legislator and being up here. Uh, I was influenced by former uh, representative, our first Latino representative, Ralph Acosta. I was a committee person for him. I, I worked in his campaign. And he always used to say that to me. He used to say, you know, I want to prep you because you're going to take my place someday. And I said, not me. That's not for me. And yes, it was for me because here I am. Uh, 22 years later. Okay. All right. I have that you were um, president of the Hispanic Legislators Group. Is yeah. that still current? Yes. We, okay. we, we have we implemented that in 2015, um, but I was still the only voice and the only Latino, so I was my own caucus and my own uh, president. Mm -hmm. um, but then we started growing. We're up to five now. Uh, the way things look, I think there'll be two more coming in, so mm -hmm. that'll be seven, so it's growing. Um, and it was just recently that uh, uh, Madam Leader Joanna McClintock uh, got it down on the House roster mm -hmm. and uh, we voted on it and um, we are a Latino caucus now. We're a Latino caucus of five members presently. And what has been the history leading up to that? I know it, you mentioned the last time it took you a long time to get it recognized. So if you could explain the backstory with that. It, 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 the leadership that we have had in the past were many of many words. Mm -hmm. um, and when Joanna came in, she goes, this, this is going to be a priority uh, because you are a member just like everybody else and you're entitled uh, to have your wishes. And, and it happened. Mm -hmm. It happened. So we're here today because uh, of her uh, using her power, her influences to get this done. And what five or four members, mm -hmm. is it five, what uh, members make up that group? It, it's myself, uh, Danilo Burgos from Philadelphia, Ben uh, Sanchez from Montgomery County, uh, Hambridge, Liz Hambridge, and um, Manny Guzman from Reading. So you've been in the house for a long time. Um, what has been your experience being a person of color in the house? Do you think you've been treated differently, either negatively or positively? And if you could explain any backstory with that or any stories you I, have. I, 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 I try to teach. Mm -hmm. um, do they pick up and learn? Some do, some don't. Uh, in the game of politics, uh, you have to be very protective of yourself. Uh, in this game, they always have to be a sacrificial lamb, mm -hmm. and you do what it is necessary, and always remember that you're here representing the people that gave you the opportunity to represent them. Um, and and things can happen up here. You know, we we got caught up in uh, people getting arrested and losing their positions because of of the the bribe incident that we had had here under Corbett. And, um, you know, I, I was one of those people that approached me, but I was not interested. I, I, I didn't take this position. I didn't take this job uh, to become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do the right thing and, and with no cost. Even up to, to this day, I don't see any lobbyists that will tell you that I participate in any dinners. Mm -hmm. I don't do dinners with lobbyists. I do meetings here in my office. If we're walking down the hallway, we'll have a conversation. I don't let them wine and dine me. This is not what we're here for. Mm -hmm. um, other legislators do, but that, you know, I'm, wor I'm worried about me. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about others, what they do and they don't do. But this is a job that can make you, but this job can also break you. Yeah. Okay. So um, what are some of the challenges in facing people of color in politics today? What sort of things are they facing? Um, maybe something different than white candidates have? How do I answer that when I'm not being rude? <laughs> well, <laughs> and, um, there's no rule that you don't have to be. <laughs> have we been treated differently? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it's 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 what, people of color have been treated the way Republicans treat Democrats and Democrats treat Republicans. You know, mm-hmm. if you're not of that party, uh, you know, you're you're not of great importance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always always I have told uh, both sides of the aisle. I want you to get to learn my world so I can learn yours and that's the way we can identify what the needs are um, because at the time that I was here I was the lone Latino legislator so I didn't only represent Philadelphia where I was elected I did the whole Commonwealth because there was no other voice but me mm-hmm. um, so those, those were the needs and you know the fighting with the leadership about having Latinos in the administration having Latinos in the caucus you know, for a little bit we had a Latino outreach person, but then they let that position go. And, um, you know, but yet they still wanted to have stuff uh, translated for their district in Spanish, but they didn't want to hire people. And I told them, I says, listen, the dialect in Spanish, mm-hmm. it's all different ways. So you may be saying or writing something that doesn't mean the same for others. And, you know, uh, you know it, was, it, it was falling in deaf ears. And, and and whatever and me myself for being outspoken mm-hmm. I, they could never take me as a prisoner because you know I, I never cooperated I did I did what I needed to do for the people of the 180 no one up here can uh, get me back reelected to come back up here I didn't come up here to make friends I've already brought my friends and those are the ones that live in the 180 they gave me the opportunity and I and I always stretched out the importance of giving everybody an opportunity and always tell them, I says, listen, you know, you guys have to be more selective in who you're bringing and, and, and taking the opportunity. And, and, you know, it fell in deaf ears and they took care of their own. And, um, you know, and sometimes other members that were here when I was, he goes, hey, Cruz, weren't you lucky that leadership didn't like you? Because everybody else in that leadership all wound up in jail. <laughs> and I said, you know, I did it because I did what the constituency needed, not what leadership wanted and mm-hmm. did. And you know, when there was time that um, they didn't want to give me what I needed for my district, I held out my vote. Yeah. And then I cut my, uh, not cut my deal, but until I spoke to the governor and told him what the needs were, okay. you know, I did what I needed to do. I voted with my district. I always did that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and whatnot. So that's what got me 22 years. Um, here as a, as a legislator. Yeah. So you've been here, as you said, 22 years. Mm-hmm. How do you rank then in terms of seniority? Um, I know you have a chair position. Mm-hmm. If you want to talk about that at all. The, the, new, the new folks that are coming in, you have reclaimers, you have, um, what's the other name for the other group? Um, uh, the Millenniums and, and whatever. They don't believe in, in seniority. They don't believe in leadership. They don't. They don't have that respect. They come in here with their own ideals and their ways that they're gonna run stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you when you give them the opportunity, they're lost. Okay. Um, they think that they're gonna come here and change the world and change the Ten Commandments to their their liking. That's not the way it is. This is not a one individual job. And I always tell them. I says when you're up here. You're not a Democrat or a Republican. You're a legislator trying to do the right thing to be able to change the, the dynamics in your district. Yeah. Um, you're a Democrat and a Republican in your district, but when you're up here, you're just a legislator. That's mm-hmm. all. Um, and, and that's what I've been trying to teach uh, most of them. But this new generation coming in, they have their own way uh, and style of working and doing stuff. So. Is that why you pushed you to retire from the House or other reasons? Well, um, uh, you know, 22 years, yeah. this new generation is coming, it's, it's new blood, new ways of thinking, and I, I decided to step to the side, and maybe the new ones that are coming in can all work together, whatever, mm-hmm. and I look for other ventures where, where I'm needed. Um, so, you know, I, I think I'm going back home uh, to the city of Philadelphia and see where, where I could be used to, uh, that's where I'm going. Okay, all right. So you talked about your district a little bit, the mm-hmm. 180th. Mm-hmm. Um, what makes your district unique and maybe talk about the makeup of your district, if it's largely Latino or 
African American. It, it, it was it was at one time predominantly eighty percent Latino, mm -hmm. and I ten years ago, uh, maybe more, uh, decided to give up half of my district to create a second Latino seat. And that's where we have gone and changed and grew with the 197 becoming the second Latino uh, legislative district in Philadelphia because of me giving up half of my district. This time around when they redistrict, they, they brought me down even down to 40%, which mm -hmm. could have been uh, no longer a Latino district. It could have been the, the most popular and the person that could get the most vote, which happens to be African Americans and uh, and Anglo's uh, that could vote because uh, they vote more in numbers, higher numbers than Latinos do. Mm -hmm. um, people take for granted in the Latino community. They take for granted. They ask for the most, but do the least. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't want to hear that because they feel disrespected if you say something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I have a tendency that of making sure that I say the right thing. Uh, because if it bothered you, my mother always taught us that when it hurts, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I emphasize the importance of you registering and voting because then you have a voice and and whatnot. So, you know, we're still struggling with that. And, and like I told people, now these, these Latino seats are not predominantly Latino. It could be whoever can bring out. Uh, the most voters and and whatnot because Latinos don't vote as great numbers that they should be. Mm -hmm. okay. So you came to the house then. Do you have any mentors or people you really were close with during your earlier years or even now? Do you have any close relationships? The only the only two the only only person that uh, I went to dinner with uh, uh, was my mother Rosita Youngblood. Okay. You know. She got punished just as much as I did. <laughs> we were a duo, mm -hmm. like Batman and Robin. Uh, whatever we did, we did together. Mm -hmm. And you know, and some people would tell me stuff to take back to her. And I said, she's a grown woman. You go talk to her and whatever. And when they couldn't get through me, they would go to her to come to me and she would say the same thing. He's a grown ass man. Go see you and you convince him. That is your job. I don't get paid to babysit. Mm -hmm. and, and whatever. So you know, we did, a, we, we voted and did stuff to the betterment of our districts, not to be controlled, not to do what everybody else had to. You have to fall in line because this is what your governor and this one. No, that's not the way it works. The governor didn't vote for me. Yeah. And I don't work for the governor. We work with the governor, which is a big, big difference um, and whatnot. So, um, you know, uh, my tactics have worked, kept me out of trouble. Um, and, you know, I'm one of the highest and the longest elected in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Meaning, even though you have council people and other people on other levels, I've been the highest ranking in, in history. All right. So, um, you, you kind of hinted at your predecessor. Did you have a good relationship with your predecessors? Um, did they mentor you at all? No. Um, <laughs> Ralph Acosta, um, the history of the 180th, the first Latino elect was Herman Quiles. He only did one term. Then Ralph Acosta came and ran, and he did uh, five terms, 10 years. And then Ben Ramos ran against Ralph Acosta mm -hmm. and only did three terms, six years. And then I came. And I, and I did I, I did every one of them because I did 11 terms, 22 years in the House of Representatives. Okay. All right, let's see here. Let's move to um, the Black Caucus itself. Mm -hmm. So how have you been involved with the Legislative Black Caucus? Very, very minimum. Okay. Very minimum because even though I was a member because I was the only Latino, mm -hmm. we didn't have a Latino caucus then. Yes. And when I spoke about Latino issues, uh, they put it in the back burner. And you know, some at that time when I came in, they were not very friendly. Mm -hmm. And they thought that my my needs were not at, in, in their agenda. And to one day, I told them, I said, you know what? I love how you criticize how the Republican parties or white elected officials treat you because it's the same way you're treating me 
So I, I was uh, I wasn't allowed. I, I ran a couple times, and I, I wasn't allowed to get elected because I was not black. Mm -hmm. I was just other. And then I uh, when brought it up to them and says, "Why don't we change the name to the Black Latino Caucus?" I'm, I'm not black. Mm -hmm. I'm Latino, and and whatever. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. it never happened. Now that I was approached because they said. When now you guys are growing, should we consider um, having a, a black Latino caucus? And I says, when I wanted it, you didn't want it. Now you see the numbers, you're mm -hmm. not going to use our numbers to get what you want. Mm -hmm. We'll stay with us the Latino caucus. Okay. Keep them both separate. Yeah. Do you see the Latino caucus continuing to grow and absolutely. get more diversity in the uh, house? I, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. And it's a diversity because when you say Latino, mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, Puerto Rican, Dominican, and others, and Cuban, because uh, Ben Ben is Cuban. Yeah. And so you have multiple culture in one Latino caucus. Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna get more growing, you're gonna have more Latinos participating in the electoral process, um, so this caucus can grow. Okay. Now, you kind of hinted this too, but um, how has it impacted your service with the Black Caucus? Did it motivate you to do different things then, or work on different legislation? Yeah, yeah, I, I did everything on my own. Okay. You know, I will, when I felt like it, mm -hmm. I will participate and go to meetings or whatever, but I did everything on my own. Yeah. Um, anything that, I, that was superficial or whatever, uh, I, I did on, on my own. And it was just like the caucus here. I was the only Latino, so, mm -hmm. you know, I was not of great importance to that. Yeah. When they did us the story of, of me finding the little girl, which they did a movie on, yes. then the caucus wanted to take over, make it, and I said, you guys didn't do this. I did this. Well, no, we'll do all your media. I said, absolutely not. I've mm -hmm. survived on my own. I will continue surviving on my own. And I did everything on my own. I didn't want to, to use the caucus as, as something that they did when they did not do because they shuttered me out. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but now uh, they see that we're growing, and they're seeing uh, that we have different light, uh, styles and uh, customs, and so now they're trying to wheel us in. Yeah. Now, because I, w I was just the, out of 203 members, I was the only Latino mm -hmm. in these halls. Now there's, it's grown. Yeah. Um, do your constituents issues, things that are important to them, align with the Latino caucus and the Black caucus? Do they have a lot of the same? legislative issues you want to see I, changed? I, I think black and Latino and others, mm -hmm. If I, I don't think it's it's about race. I think it's about um, areas. Mm -hmm. I think our needs it, it comes from Philadelphia, not from different um, uh, culture and backgrounds. Um, you're from Philadelphia, you have the same needs. And in Philadelphia, education, housing, and gun control. That, that's the number one goal all over Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. It's all the same the same in everybody's district back at home. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's not only just Philadelphia, because it's growing throughout Pennsylvania, you know, yeah. um, and, and whatever. So, you know, one of the most important thing is how do we get others uh, to get to know my world and I learn your world and see that it's not that much different, but mm -hmm. we just have to work together uh, and to some of them, we guys, you know, we, we, we walk away from things like that's not going to happen in, in, in my town and in my area. Guess what? Absolutely someone can go get a gun in Philadelphia and come into your county, kill somebody, go right back to Philadelphia. Yes, that can happen. But it doesn't happen frequently, so you think it's not going to come. You need to stop it before it becomes what it should have. Mm -hmm. So, kind of uh, talking about your whole house service then, um, what do you enjoy most about serving the 188th district, or the 180th district? The 180 all oh, that I've been able to bring funds to create uh, clinics, mm -hmm. schools, and, and, and other projects in the 180th that were not there before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I brought a lot of funding back to my district. I did legislation where I got governors to sign. Um, I, I, I've learned so much having this position and how I could have changed people's lives. And I did in one way or another 
Mm -hmm. I've helped and changed people's lives. Yeah, well, that's good. Anything you enjoy, or just maybe pick one thing you enjoyed the least <laughs> about being a representative. <laughs> or a couple, if you have a couple. The least that I didn't like, mm -hmm. having to travel up here and staying up here. I, yeah. You know, uh, uh, as a legislator, if you look, the majority, I say 80% of the members are single or divorced. You put a strain in your ma in your marital and your raising of your children because you're dedicating too much time up here. You know, like city councils in, in different cities in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. um, um, they, they're part-timers today because it's one day. You're up here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes Thursdays, and you're missing a lot back at home. And uh, that's, the, that's one of the most difficult, out of, out of everything I said that, coming up here to have to stay up here and away from home. Okay. So um, since you've been here a long time, you've worked with a lot of different speakers. What are some of your, the ones you worked with mm -hmm. the most, the ones you really enjoyed working with, or maybe not so much, if you want to explain some of that? The most respect, the high-ranking uh, uh, speaker, Ryan. And one of professionalism and that you can count no matter what party you were and gave you your word and you could take it to the bank, John Brazell. Those are the two that, and they're Republicans. Mm -hmm. But I've got more done with Republican speakers than my own. Okay. So those, those two gentlemen have taught me what uh, this body contained and it was about. Actually, is it? Is there anything else you'd like to add about your time here in the house, or any issues you hope are going to be tackled before your retirement? I don't. I don't. I'm always ready for anything. So yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't say, oh, I didn't expect that. You know, I'm, I'm always ready for whatever you know, whatever situation comes about. But no, I'm. You know, it's going to be a good transition. Uh, the gentleman that is taking my place worked for me, so he knows. Uh, and I'm always going to be there, so if he needs me and, and whatnot, I'd be more than happy uh, to, to lend him uh, the olive branch and the extension of helping him, something that I didn't have. Yeah. You know, uh, and that's one of the keys that you need to have people that can guide you and help you, and um, we don't do that. And I never had that, so, you know, I, you know we all crawl before we walk, but this time around, when I got it like that, I had to walk before I crawled because there was there was no help. Sure. Um, but you know, this person that's coming in and replacing me in the one eighty is going to do an excellent job. Okay. All right. Well, that's it.